So this Friday, we also do have a big options expirations. Before, I would look at the max pain price because sometimes we see like the, the, the traders somehow get the price to the max pain price where both the long side and short side lose. That's at 64,000. I have a hard time seeing Bitcoin go back down to 64,000. It could happen, but that that notion has been uh, dispelled many times. So I don't really think that's gonna happen. But whatever we do see options expiration, which is the last Friday of every month, which is this Friday, there could be something, could be volatility, could explain why this, this week so far has been a little bit weaker rather than breaking through $70,000. Still not out of reach because according to liquidation walls, there's just not much holding us back, really. There's really no reason why we can't just flip upwards really, really quickly. But that could explain why we're getting the sudden weakness versus last week when we were just shooting upwards. Michael Saylor. Michael Saylor is in a is in some hot waters right now. And a lot of Bitcoiners, a lot of Bitcoin maxis are really angry at this interview that he just did. He called a lot of Bitcoin maxis, what did he say? He called them anarchists. So basically, uh, once upon a time, and a lot of Bitcoin maxis, um, you know, have this, have this, um, uh, underlying uh i guess thesis that hey self-custody is the way to go right you don't trust anyone you don't trust institutions you don't trust anyone you always want to self-custody and and for the most part that's true right of course there's there's consequences to that that means you have to you have to safeguard your recovery phrase your private key because that's very important but ultimately that means you control your crypto no one can take it away from you no one can steal it from you right no one can confiscate it um but sailor is now going a different direction saying that you don't have to self-custody you can trust governments and institutions you can trust custodians you can trust big banks to act like custodians and those that don't are actually going to cause governments to confiscate. It's kind of weird. He kind of went like a 180. <laughs> he did exact 180. Um, and a lot of people are head scratching and they're wondering if it's because MicroStrategy themselves use Coinbase as a custodian or if MicroStrategy is planning on becoming a custodian itself, that's why he's changing his tune. It's a little weird. It's a little weird because once upon a time, he told people, right, in this one, if they come after you, you just you just tell them to F themselves and say you lost your 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 ledger in a boating accident, right? Like they could never take that away from you. That's what he said years ago. And now he's like, well, you know what? Don't worry about being confiscated. Just, you know, just just hand over your Bitcoin to the custodians. Kind of 180. This is a little bit different now. So I don't know. He's in some hot waters for that, for that interview. You guys can watch it yourself. I'm not gonna play it, but uh, you guys decide what he really means by that. Yesterday was a correction day. BlackRock and its investors did not care. Threw $329 million into IBIT. Other funds had outflows. IBIT had a massive inflow. So that makes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven consecutive days of 200 plus million inflow. And now, in case you guys are wondering, IBIT is now coming close to 2% of the supply. Within nine months, they are closing in at 2% of the supply of all Bitcoin 
in existence. That is staggering. They have 386,000 Bitcoin. Binance, I think it's the second largest holder, around 600,000. They are on track to surpass Binance sometime next year. And they will probably surpass Satoshi holding 1 million Bitcoin probably the year after that. Okay. BlackRock and others understand that Bitcoin is what you want to hold long term. Despite the short term price volatility, it does not matter. Institutions and Larry Fink and BlackRock and others, they now understand Bitcoin is what you want to hold because there is a set supply. There's only so many and it can't be artificially inflated like fiat or any other precious metals or commodity or investments out there. It's just different. It's built different. That's crazy. And I'm not saying this is a good thing. No one wants BlackRock to hold 2% of supply. And eventually it might hold up to 5%, 6%, 10% supply. No one wants that. We all know BlackRock is up to no good. No one wants that. But my point is, they understand. And my second point is, you want to buy some for yourself before they get to that point. Because one day when BlackRock holds 10% of supply, trust me, that day, uh, Bitcoin will be well above a million dollars. Okay. So you want to grab as much as you can before that day comes. It's not too late. It's not too late. And this is the beginning. This is the beginning of the end, meaning, <laughs> meaning the, the reserves on all the exchanges is starting to go down. It's beginning of the end. This is the only cycle, the first cycle and the only cycle so far where the reserves have been dropping while we're entering a bull market. Every other cycle, we've been seeing Bitcoin reserves go up, not down. This is the first one ever. And guess why? Because of those ETFs, they've been buying by tens of billions of dollars. And that is why reserves are going down. And it's not going to change. It's not like all of a sudden next year or the year after that, you go see the reserve go up. No, there's just no more. After they're removed from circulation, it's just going to keep on going down. That's the beauty of Bitcoin. And that's why it's different from fiat currency, because there is a set supply and there's only so many being created per day. And how much is being eaten up is way more than what's being produced per day.